disgraced iMessage on Android app. Can't take the hint is back for more. Will you download Sunbird's app? So I have not, I did not read this or I was not aware of this, uh, this news piece before I clicked on it, but it looks like from the title that they might be trying to get back into the iMessage on Android thing. Now this is what got me banned from Apple. So no, I will not be trying this. Um, I'm trying to get in Apple's good graces uh, so I can get my app on the Apple uh, App Store. Now the developer that I'm I'm uh, talking with uh, said that should that will not be an issue and uh, we'll get it on there. But um, Sunbird, the iMessage for Android app is making a comeback. Invitations are rolling out in small phases starting today. I wonder, did I get one? The company claims it has replaced its old architecture with new architecture focused on privacy. Very interesting. Um, I think I'm going to have to go into my incognito mode and test this out. This is too juicy for me to uh, not try it, basically. And I'll bring you all along for the ride. I'm not going to do it now, but maybe uh, I'll record something when we get done with this live stream and then we'll uh, see what happens. I'll upload it tomorrow and we, everybody can see how this is going to go because I do want to review it. I don't want to waste the rest of our time here on this, but let me see if they emailed me anything. And I'm not going to go through the whole story of how they're passed. I think it's pretty well documented, at least for viewers of this channel. Again, that's what got me banned uh, the first time. But now this is different from this is Sunbird. Remember, there were two applications that would get iMessage on Android. Sunbird, which is the one we're viewing now, is the specific platform that got me banned. Uh, it was paired with the Nothing uh, company to put on the Nothing Phone 2s. Let's see. I'm do this Sunbird, right? Yeah. I don't know why they're doing this. Because Apple will find out how Sunbird is routing their servers and it will be killed. I uh, I guarantee by Monday morning, watch. It, when I'm live streaming on Monday and I don't mention Sunbird or this this story, please remind me. Uh, I can almost guarantee you that they're gonna put a, uh, they're gonna they're gonna throw them on the chopping block, and they're going to snap and disconnect their their servers. How they route these iMessages? Um, let's see if it says on here. Sunbird. Let's see. So here's the other thing. They, I'm not going to say they got caught lying, but look, in uh, just a couple of years ago when it was released, uh, they promised to bring iMessage compatibility to Android, meaning blue bubbles when you're messaging in Android from an iPhone. Pretty cool, right? It was for <laughs> about five days until they got shut down. Um, now, they claimed it was end-to-end -end encryption. When the iPhone message iPhone, it's encrypted. When an iPhone messages an Android, it's not encrypted. However, that's one of the features Sunbird was saying they bring to the table. Not only will you get blue bubbles when you're messaging an iPhone to Android, but the connection, the message connection, will also be encrypted. Um, unfortunately, it was discovered that that was not really the case. Um, it was insecure and not private as it was advertised, right? Um, then uh, the cat was out of the bag at that point. And then the company had to put out a immediate press release to try to put the flames out um, from it being burned to the ground. And they said they were they temporarily shut down the service themselves. But uh, it was quickly found out that Apple snapped the server connection uh, to them as well. And it looks like they might have tried to find a way around um, the new block. But let's see. So the company adds, Sunbird adds that it has swapped out its old architecture. Damn, it was on AV1. That's old school. Well, not old school, but in the tech world, yeah, that's old. Um, that leveraged Fire, 
Fire Store for temporarily storing messages. Uh, with a new architecture, uh, AV2, this new architecture integrates RCS and is said to have user privacy as the central tenet. Now, uh, just from that statement right there, I tend to believe them. Uh, AV1, pretty old. AV2, um, pretty new. So if they have to, if they were running on an older platform, older structure, uh, yeah, it was insecure, and I don't know why they would say why they would lean on the privacy uh, so hard if it was on old architecture, which has been broken and cracked in the past. So AV2, brand new. Um, here's what you get with AV2. Unen let's see, unencrypted messages are never stored. Uh, I'm not going to go over all this. This is too much. But I'm a, I will link this story in the description once this is done um, on our eSIM Studios channel. So if you want to look into this, be my guest. But um, it's actually a decent story right here. And I'm going to actually download... I'm going to try it again, but i got to be sneaky about it. I'm going to have to do it under like a burner account or something on a... Uh, on a phone that I don't use that much. So I got a couple of them laying around here. But uh, yeah, I'll look into that and have more for you probably on the next day or two at the latest Monday. We'll, we'll, I'll record myself testing this out to see if it really works.